Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got a new mini PC to take a look at. This one comes from Shuttle. This is their DX30, and it is running with the new generation Apollo Lake Intel chip on board. It's a J3355 dual core processor, and we'll be putting this thing through its paces here in just a second. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Shuttle. So when we're done with this review, we send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware right now. It's got a very rugged metal case here. I think it'll hold up very well in an environment that uh, might lend itself to some abuse. And if you uh, just put an SSD in here, you'll be completely solid state. There's no fan on board to suck in any dirt either. Uh, these are sold as a bare bare bones kit, which means that uh, you don't get RAM or storage on board when you buy it. You have to add those things in separately. So what you're going to see here costs $189 without the RAM or storage. You can put up to 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM inside, and you can also add an M2 drive as well as a SATA drive, and there's room for both. I took this apart on my extras channel. I'll put a link down below to that so you can see uh, what it looks like inside. So it's very easy to work with. you got two RAM slots and then, again, two uh, opportunities for storage inside as well. Uh, there's a ton of ports on here, which we're going to go through right now. So you get a microphone in, a headphone jack here, your power button is here. They even have activity lights for power and disk usage, which is sometimes helpful, especially if you're running this as a little server uh, without a monitor attached. You've got an SD card reader over here, so you can pop in your uh, SD card. This might actually work well as a do-it-yourself NAS if you bring on some uh, external storage through its USB ports here. So you have two USB 3 ports on this side. Uh, nothing on either side here except uh, some venting, which is important for uh, natural airflow to go through. Now on the back, you'll find something interesting. Two serial ports. You probably haven't seen these on a computer in a while. Uh, this is probably because they are uh, expecting this to be used in maybe a point of sale environment that might have some serial devices to connect so you can get uh, COM1 and COM2 just like the old days on there. Four USB ports here. These are USB 2 ports. I've got my Logitech keyboard dongle in here. Uh, this looks like a power switch adapter, so if you want to have some other way of uh, getting the device to power on, I think that's what this this little plug is for there. An old style PS2 or uh, a PS2 keyboard mouse connector here, so you can connect one or the other. Uh, you've got a gigabit Ethernet jack there, display port, HDMI, and your power brick goes in here, a very small power brick. There is a Wi Fi antenna built in also. It supports Wi Fi and Bluetooth, but it does not support wireless AC. So that is the overall hardware. Let's boot it up and see how it performs. All right, so let's kick things off with some web browsing. We've got my 1080p 60 video file running here from YouTube. We'll pull up the stats for nerds and make sure it's not dropping any frames and it's keeping up uh, just fine with this video. So that is a good thing to see. Uh, so I think you'll be uh, perfectly fine browsing the web and doing uh, Netflix and Hulu and everything. Uh, one thing you should know though that Netflix is beginning to support 4K video on PCs, but not PCs running with this processor. It supports the more expensive KB Lake processors, but not the Apollo Lake processors like this one. So you will get uh, 1080p at Netflix, but not 4K. It is capable of doing 4K video as you'll see uh, later on in this review, but just know Netflix will be limited uh, to 1080p, but you can get it on other platforms like YouTube here. Let's browse the web real quick and see how well it can pull up a website. Another thing you should know as we're doing that is that this uh, device does not have wireless AC built in, just wireless N. You can probably upgrade it to AC with a new uh, wireless card, but of course that will add some cost. It's not all that much of a noticeable difference, but it's not as snappy as an AC device might be. Uh, you might get better range though uh, than you would on a regular AC 5 gigahertz connection. But it does perform uh, very well browsing the web here. As you can see, things are pretty snappy uh, rendering in, and I think you'll have a pretty good web experience. It'll probably be a little faster if you plug in the Ethernet cable. On the Octane benchmark test, we got a score of 11,067. It's right up there with the Intel NUC we looked at the other week, uh, also running with one of these Apollo Lake processors, so it's in line with other computers in its generation. Uh, it's also very close to what we saw on the HP Stream Mini a couple of years ago. Now, that device consumes more power than this one does, but this one performs about the same, which is pretty cool to see uh, where Intel has been directing their energies, which is squeezing more performance out uh, with less power. And that performance benefit continues when you're doing things like Microsoft Word here. So we've got our uh, big newsletter template here. You can see how fast everything renders in. You can very easily work with uh, text and graphics and reflow things without uh, any problems whatsoever. So I think for a work computer, this should do just fine. 
All right, let's take a look now at some gaming. We'll begin with something casual like Minecraft here. This is the original version of Minecraft that most people are still running. Uh, not the best performance on this, even with a performance enhancer uh, like Optifine that I have running in here right now. So I can uh, usually get to about 30 frames per second if I uh, wait for everything to load in, but uh, generally it's running around 20 to 25, give or take. So playable, but uh, not great. And these things really aren't well suited for gaming, but they do better than prior generations of uh, this class of processor. Let's take a look now at Rocket League. And like we saw on other Apollo Lake devices, you can get Rocket League to run on uh, these little chips. You have to turn all the settings down, but you can run it at 1080p at uh, what I consider to be a playable frame rate. Your opinions might differ. So uh, we're hovering around 25 to 30 frames per second. It's generally uh, staying around 28, at least in my testing so far, uh, with all those settings turned down at this resolution. The game looks pretty ugly, but it doesn't look as ugly as it did on uh, prior generations of chips that I uh, just couldn't really get the game working at anything more than 720p. So it's still ugly, but it's uglier at a higher resolution now. And that, to me at least, is progress. Uh, the kind of games that run well on this are some of the older titles that were out maybe uh, 10 or 15 years ago. There's also a bunch of indie games on Steam like Shovel Knight that do pretty well on this chipset. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 2,196, which does put it behind the Intel NUC, which is uh, running with that Apollo Lake architecture also, but it has a quad core processor. So it does do a little better than this one does because this one has less cores available, but uh, the graphics scores were pretty close. And again, if you're going to run things like Shovel Knight here and other indie games, I think you'll do okay. Again, just check the specifications first and do not expect this to be a gaming PC. But it does do very well as a home theater PC. And what I did earlier was take a Blu-ray file, an MKV video from a, a Blu-ray disc and played it back on here and it worked great. I was able to take that 1080p movie and play it back at 4K. So it was up converting to 4K. It looked great. Uh, the lossless audio also worked. DTS HD worked just fine on it. So for playing back 1080p movies, I think you're going to have a very good experience with it. Uh, what I did find though, is that when you get into the HEVC stuff, it gets a little more complicated. Used to be very simple to talk about home theater on PCs, but now there's a whole bunch of different stuff to talk about. So I'm gonna go into the technical weeds here a little bit. Uh, so I did try to play back two 10-bit HEVC files. The first one here is, this is from the uh, Jellyfish sample suite. Uh, this one runs at 60 megabits per second and is at uh, 1080p, but it is using 10-bit color. And it does seem to play back just fine. We're not losing any frames as, as it's playing back here. There was one skipped frame, but uh, generally it performs quite well. So I was able to get this to play back with out uh, too many issues here. Really good uh, quality on this file. It did run into some trouble though when we went to the higher end stuff. So these 140 megabit 4K files are uh, what you might typically find on some of these new uh, 4K Blu-ray discs. And this one starts out okay, but uh, you'll see here the color gets all out of whack. And that's because these chips don't yet fully support uh, this level of HEVC decoding. So if you are getting into HEVC, I think you'll be fine at 1080p. You might start seeing some uh, glitchiness when you start introducing some of the 10-bit uh, stuff into the mix, but uh, these do handle HEVC better than the last generation chips from Intel. So uh, if you are looking for higher end hot home theater, I, I think the KB Lake processors that we've been looking at, the i5s and the i7s uh, might be a better choice at the moment, but uh, these things are definitely catching up. And if you're just looking for something to play back, the media that you have from uh, various services where you bought media, uh, this will do fine. It's very good as a 1080p movie playback device. Now on a bare bones PC, sometimes buying the operating system, if you have to go to Windows, will cost you a lot of money. Well, the good news here is that you can also run Linux on this. You can download something like Ubuntu here for free and get a fully functional operating system here that will boot up uh, without having to go and spend more money on software licenses. So I can go uh, browse the web on this. The Wi-Fi works just fine. The audio works fine. Uh, all the things that typically don't work sometimes with these PCs when you install Linux on them do work here. So you'll have a very good experience with an alternative operating system. And what's nice about Ubuntu is they give you all these uh, applications like word processors and spreadsheets all built in here as well. So it's a very uh, easy thing to get going with. I might do a video on how to install it at some point if some of you are curious. It's actually a very easy process, especially with a new PC, but uh, some of you have written in with some questions on it. But I was very pleased to see uh, just how painless it was uh, to go to another operating system on here. So all in a pretty decent little computer. It is fanless. It is quiet. It doesn't seem to do too much thermal 
throttling either. I did run the uh, 3D Mark. Uh, there's a test they run called the stress test that uh, measures how much thermal throttling comes in under load. And although it did thermal throttle a little bit when it was really pushed very hard, I think generally you won't see too much throttling, if at all, doing basic tasks and playing back videos and whatever. So generally it seems to be uh, performing a little better, especially on its score on that test than I've seen from other smaller mini PCs that were also fanless. I think it's well uh, ventilated here, provided you keep those vents clear and uh, a pretty decent little PC for getting work done for point of sale uh, and also probably as a home theater device perhaps because it does run silent and it can play back a bulk of the media that you throw at it. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.